Hi, we are looking at backsliding in this Christian faith. Backsliding in the Christian faith. And the Christian definition of it is simply a falling away from the Lord and His will. A falling away from the Lord and His will. If you want to have an in depth definition again, we'll say it is a fall from grace to go astray to go wrong, to lapse, to regress, to relapse, to renegade, to retrogress, to revert, to sin, to slip, to stray, and to weaken, to weaken. So, having looked at the dictionary definition, I want to say it is simply a cooling off or a losing of the first love. It is not feeling like the way you used to anymore. Not loving the things of God you used to love anymore. We we'll look at them one by one as time would permit us. Revelation 2, 4 to 5. Revelation 2, 4 to 5 describes backsliding this way. It said, Thou hast left thy first love. Thou hast left thy first love. And this is contained in the letters to the churches. Apostle John wrote letters to the different churches describing their state. He did a spiritual self-examination of the various churches and wrote them according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, having tested their temperatures spiritually. So we are saying that as we continue in the Christian faith, it is always good for us to take stock. It is always good for us to take the temperature reading of our spiritual state to know at what level we are at. Because it does not come sudden. It is something that comes softly. The devil makes it softly. Just a little, a little, a little, a little. And if one is not careful, you find out that that person has fallen from faith and has become lukewarm, losing his first love. So Revelation 3, Revelation 2, 4 to 5, let me take it. In the Bible here it says, the letter to the church in Ephesus, the Apostle John deemed it fit to send a reminder to the church in Ephesus to go back to their first love. Let me read from verse 1. He said, Unto the angel of the church in Ephesus write, This thing said he that had, this thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them, we say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I somewhat I have something against thee, because thou hast left thy false love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the false works, or else I'll come unto thee quickly. And we remove thy candlesticks out of his place, except thou repent. The letter to the church in Ephesus, first of all, commended them. They had a good record. They had a list of works attached to their faith. Here he said, They were God-fearing. They abhorred evil. They did not love anything at all that was evil. And when they discovered anyone that was walking in the path of evil and was not doing what the Lord has asked, they took action. They were not quiet. They were not silent. They labored to make sure that they kept the faith, to make sure that they propagated the faith, to make sure that they disseminated the faith, 
with a far with a fervency that did not allow them to endure anyone else that was walking in error. But along the line, gentle, gentle, little by little, they lost their first love. That means they were no more fervent. They were no more doing these things they were doing. They became lukewarm. They became, I beg, whatever they like, let them do. They were no more custodians of the faith. They were no more guidance. They were no more watchful. They became lukewarm. And later came to say they should repent and do the first works. In our lives, we need to examine constantly what the assignment is, what we have been called to do, whether we are ministers or we are, we are worshippers. There is something, a fervency, a fellowship. We find it here as a, a, a falling away from the Lord and His will. It is a loss of fellowship. We need to examine to see where did we start, how did we start, and where are we at now? What is our level of yieldedness, of obedience? Of course, when you start some stacks along the line, there may be a change in instruction. And uh, you may need to leave what you were doing before and go, or your timing for worship and change. But it is an call to examine our ways that if there has been no such mandate, to say, change location, change what you are doing, start a new work, start a new this. For example, you see ministers who have churches. I've heard of several. Then all of a sudden, the Lord will say, those various pastors that have those churches, leave it for them. Bless them. Leave it for them. Start a new work. I've seen examples like that. Or somebody used to start something. Then the Lord will say, no, this one, leave this one, it's okay. Move somewhere else, start again. So if this is not the scenario for you, if it is not that you have accepted such instructions, we are being reminded this morning to examine our ways to see how fervent were we in fellowship with him, in reading the word, in prayer, in doing his will, in obedience. The way you used to respond when he speaks to you, the zeal, the fervency with which you get up to go and do it, is it still like that? Or are you doing your own thing? Have you left that first love? So it's not a very long message. This is just a reminder. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, Revelation. Revelation chapter number 2. Read from verse 1 to 5. You see there the letter by the apostle John to the church in Ephesus. Reminding them of their first love and pointing out that they have backslidden. They should please return. This morning, the same call is coming to you and I that we should examine and see. Have we fallen? If we have not fallen, check the temperature, check the barometer. How is it? How does it work? He said, or else I will remove thee. Else I remove thee. Else I will remove thee. You will know it by the way you respond urgently to the instructions given you. There were days, in those days, you won't sleep until you have done that. But now, is it the same? Do you respond with the same fervency? So a call to say, let's examine our spiritual temperatures. Are we standing or have we backsliding? And we say it comes gently, softly, softly. Some of us, we don't like to miss church before COVID-19. We were there all the time. But now that COVID-19 is no more. Do we still, have we picked up our responsibilities in the various churches? Are we as fervent as we used to? Are we as loving as we used to? Are we as caring as we used to? It is a call for your self-examination so that we may be restored back in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to say thank you for your word that has gone forth. We ask that even as we have given it, looking at in terms of the responsibilities, the works you have given to us, in terms of our fellowship, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you help us. When we are falling short, we ask for grace to pick up our pieces and continue in the mighty name of Jesus. This letter is to the church in Ephesus. They were zealous for the Lord, but now they were no more. And God said, go back, go back. 
Use it to examine your own lifestyle as I do. And let's see where we are falling, if need be, anywhere. And go back. And if we're not falling, it's a reminder that the devil is not sleeping. He's always there looking for whom to fall. Will not fall, will not fall, will not fall. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. His countenance of favor and of mercy never leave us all. And are you other? You don't even know him at all, at all. Not to talk of backsliding. God loves you. And he wants to have a fellowship with you. He wants to be Lord and Master over your life. All you need to do is to receive this. A stretched hand of love. John 3.16 reminds us. that for God so loved the world that he sent. He sent his only begotten son Jesus. For you and for me. That we may have life. And have it more abundantly. That we may fellowship. That we may walk in love. We may walk in a newness of life. Receive the free gift. How? It comes with a repentance. All he needs is a genuine repentance. You simply say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me my sin. Once you've said that, that's all. Your sins are forgiven. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. His countenance of favor and of mercy never leave us all. Remember, church on the air, Jordan 93.9 FM, have a lot of messages that we have recorded there and have also posted on the YouTube. Please visit it. Then we have Church on the Air on Facebook. Search the scriptures. Ministers of the Truth. Nation building. Like the pages. Share them. And other messages as well that are, inspir that are inspirational to you. That have encouraged you and energized you. Send to others. Post. Download the Bible app that have daily Bible inscriptions. Post. Share. Let's dominate the cyberspace. Jesus. God bless you. Thank you very much.